Hi, this is Wes Holing with TechSoup, and today we're going to be talking about Adobe Photoshop CC and the toolbar. We won't be covering all of the tools, but uh, we'll be, we will be covering some of the basics. Uh, of course, I'll be demonstrating in Adobe Photoshop CC version 2015, uh, but it, all these tools apply in, uh, in earlier versions of Photoshop, so whatever version you've got, you're covered. We'll be covering some of the basics like the Move tool, the Rectangular Marquee, or uh, otherwise known as the Selection tool. Uh, we'll be covering the Crop tool, which you see located in Section B, uh, and a couple of the, uh, the tools farther down in Section G, uh, you can see the Hand tool and the, uh, the Zoom tool as well. So let's get started. Uh, the first tool I'm going to show is the Crop tool, which is the fifth one down here. You can see that it's a crop. It's got a little icon like a crop, and uh, the, the tool tip that when I hover over it says Crop Tool. So if I click that, so in this photo I have uh, an individual standing in a uh, snowy forest. If I want to just crop to the individual, I can do that by choosing the Crop Tool and then clicking and dragging around the person. So if I click in the upper left corner and drag down to my bottom right, there's a, uh, a dotted line that begins to emerge around the person until I let go. And then there's a section of the image that, that's, that's called out with a rule of thirds grit. It's sort of like if you've masked off a section of your wall to paint, this is masking off what I've, the, the, the part of the image that I want to affect. Uh, but with any, any masking uh, with a crop tool, you can adjust the parts that you want to crop to by clicking and dragging on one of these boxes in the, on the sides or in the corners. And once I've got it to where I want it, I just need to press Enter. And now I have it cropped to that person. If I don't like my crop after I've selected, that's OK, too. Just like with any modern application, you can undo under the Edit menu. There's Undo and Step Backward. Both will, both will get the job done in this case. So I can redo my crop if I need to. Uh, and I'll take this opportunity, too, to call out an option in the, in the options uh, bar at the top. This drop-down here has a couple of options, has a lot of options, actually, but I'm only going to work on, uh, focus on the first two. There's ratio and width, height, re and resolution. If I know the exact width and height that I need, if I'm going to upload it to the web, for example, and I need it just a certain size, I can specify that and then crop to that size. Same thing with ratio. If I don't know the exact size, but I know the right dimensions, width and height, generally if I need a, a perfect square, I can do one to one. If I need a, a certain rectangle size, one to two, and so on, I can add those, those options as well. So I'll stick with width, height, resolution. The next tool we're going to take a look at is the Zoom tool, which is located near the bottom of the Tools menu. Uh, it's uh, signified by the magnifying glass, just like a lot of modern applications do if they're going to zoom in or out of something. So if we just click that, the uh, default zoom, once you've clicked the, the zoom tool, is to zoom in. You can change that, but uh, to, to start with, we're going to just zoom in. So if I move the cursor over to the individual's head and click, it zooms in to 200%, and again, 300, 400, 500, and so on. And you'll know the size of your zoom in the upper left uh, where the, uh, the file name is. Right next to that, it'll say at 500%. If you zoom out, of course, that'll change. But you'll always know exactly how, how far in or out you are with something. And you can go less than 100 and more than 100 and so on. Uh, if we want to zoom out, on the, uh, on the Options menu, there's the Zoom Out button right there, right next to the Zoom In, which is on by default. So now if I click the individual's head, I'm at 400%, 300, 200, and now back to the actual size. Another handy tool, no pun intended, for, uh, for Photoshop is the Hand tool. It's located right above the, the Zoom tool, and it looks like a hand, so you can't miss it. The, zoom, the, the Hand tool is nice for moving the, image, the, the viewable area of an image around, but not actually adjusting the image itself. So I'll, I'll demonstrate what that means. If I zoom in with the Zoom tool to about 300%, I'm looking at a zoomed in image of the individual's head. Now I can click the hand tool. And if I click and drag on the image, it'll move the view area to the right. And of course, that means the image has now moved to the left. This doesn't affect anything in the image. The image 
is exactly as it was a moment ago. This is just, if you imagine looking at something underneath an actual magnifying glass and then moving your hand, you're just changing where you're looking while you're zoomed in. One of the most common tools is the, uh, the marquee tool, otherwise known as the selection tool. Uh, if you can see on the uh, upper left, it's the second icon down. There's a little dotted line. That's the rectangular marquee. Just like with the crop tool, it's a simple click and drag. So if I click in the upper left and drag down, I've got a dotted line around it, and I can let go, and that dotted line stays. By default, the marquee tool uh, doesn't constrict you in any way. You can drag in a freeform style. If you want to select in a very specific shape, like you did with the crop tool, for example, the marquee tool gives you the same options. I can select, deselect, and that'll get rid of my selection. On the style dropdown, I can choose fixed ratio or fixed size. This is very much like the crop tools options where you had ratio and width height resolution. So if I choose rate fixed ratio, there's defaults on as three to two, which is a for every three pixels wide, you go two pixels tall. And if I choose that, you can see that shape begin to emerge as a rectangle. And once I've selected something, I can move the selection without affecting the image as well. If I move the cursor within the selected area and click and drag, that dotted line moves along with it. If I change fixed ratio to fixed size, again, like with a crop, if I know that I need a very specific area of that image to be affected, I can tell it exactly what size that will be. If I change the width to 200 pixels, but a height of 600 pixels, you'll see a very different shape emerge. And this is handy if you know the exact space, uh, the, the exact area of a photo that you need. You only need a certain section to save or copy or adjust. Um, but generally, the freeform tool is your best bet, unless you know you need a very specific shape. The last tool I'll show is the Move tool. The Move tool is very handy for selecting a part of an image and then moving it elsewhere in the canvas. Uh, in this case, I've got a computer that's against a white background. If I want to move that computer to one of the corners of the image, for example, I can do that because it's against a white background, so my selection won't look any different uh, wherever it goes. So I'm going to change from fixed size to normal and then click and drag from the upper left to the lower right without cutting off the images, but getting as close as I can to it. So now I've got a selection around the, uh, the computer, and I'll go over to my Move tool, which is the first tool, the, uh, the four arrows. Now if I click and drag within the selection, it will move the computer to the upper left. And I can move it anywhere I need my image uh, on the canvas, and there it is. So I've moved it wherever I needed it to go, and it looks normal within the uh, canvas. And if I deselect, I can see how it looks. So that's it. Those are some of the basic tools for Photoshop. This is a great place to get started. There are a lot of tools that will do a lot more. This is a great place to get started. And uh, you know, feel free to have fun with Photoshop. Don't be afraid of trying new tools and seeing what they can do. This has been Wes Holing for TechSoup saying have fun in Photoshop. <laughs>